Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about uh, the derivative of f of z. Um, so uh, now that we have, of course, uh, in the previous videos, we really talked a lot about limits. And we've established limits pretty well. And so now we're going to do, of course, the most familiar limit of all, that of the derivative. Uh, so recall that uh, in, in real variables, so x is an element of r, uh, we have uh, the, the derivative of a function is limit uh, delta x goes to zero, some small uh, differential, uh, so x plus delta x uh, minus f of x e all over delta x. Um, if it exists, uh, and that's important, is equal to what we'll call f prime at that value x. Okay, and so uh, in any case, we always have to check to see if this limit exists for every value of x that we, uh, uh, that we uh, want to investigate. So this process can be fairly painstaking, but oftentimes we found lots of simplification formulas for, value, uh, for functions of a real variable. So now we're going to do a similar thing, um, but in the complex plane. Okay, so uh, before we go over that, we want to go over briefly uh, continuity. So continuity of f of z at z z naught some point means uh, the limit z going to z naught of f of z uh, equals w naught exists and f evaluated at the point z naught equals the limit. So if these these statements are both true, both it exists and the value of the function equals the limit, then that, that is the definition of continuity of a function uh, in the complex plane. And of course, uh, uh, continuity is, uh, is crucial. Uh, you know, in order to take a derivative, if a derivative, if a derivative exists at a point um, z naught, then f um, at z naught must be uh, continuous. Okay, so let's uh, let's go into some uh, the definition. So the standard definition for a derivative, then, uh, if it exists, is the f prime of z naught is equal to limit uh, z or sorry. Delta z, some small differential in the in the complex plane, goes to zero of f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught all over delta z. All right. So when we're talking about this delta z, remember, so we have some point, we'll call that z naught, and then we have to pick a delta z. Now, a delta z is of course a, a complex number as well. So delta z represents this uh, uh, this this uh, it, it represents some sort of value, and we could put that going anywhere. It could go all over the place. But anyway, uh, the delta z is some perturbation from z naught, and 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 it's a complex value. So uh, w that's what gives us pause for this thing. So we want to know does this exist? Okay. So of course this function itself, if you want to call this uh, g of um, it's at a particular point z naught, but really it's just a function of z. This function is not uh, continuous at delta z equals zero. Okay, can this function? I mean, we're talking about, of course, f itself is continuous at z naught, but the ratio of the difference, the differential here on the top and bottom. It itself is not continuous. We can't just plug in g at delta z equals zero does not exist, so it cannot be continuous. So we require for continuity that the function actually has a value. And for here, we're talking about delta z equals zero. We can't actually plug in delta z equals zero. So okay, those are just some technical things we want to get out of the way. So now let's talk about um, how to uh, 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 take a derivative of this. So um, so if that limit exists, and I'll write that up again, so f prime z naught at a point is limit uh, delta z goes to zero of f of z naught plus delta z 
minus f of z naught all over delta z um, for this limit to exist. So let's actually just go study some examples, see if we can compute uh, this limit. So we'll try. The, the very classic uh, case is that of um, f of z. So here's our Here's our uh, f of z is equal to z squared. All right, let's try taking the derivative of this. So let's put it into the formula. So f prime of z, and I'll, I'll dispense with the z0, we just call it z, is going to be equal to limit delta z going to 0 of um, uh, z plus delta z, because we're evaluating quantity squared, so we're evaluating our function right here by plugging in this value here, minus z squared all over delta z. All right, so of course we have to um, just, uh, we have to actually just do some algebraic simplification. We have to uh, foil out this binomial, uh, uh, quad, this binomial here, so that's going to be z squared uh, plus 2z delta z uh, plus delta z quantity squared minus z squared all over uh, delta z. Okay, those cancel right there. And then we have to just take the ratio limit. Delta z goes to zero. Now we have to take this ratio here. We see that there's a leftover is a 2z because these two cancel here. And likewise, we have a plus, and then we have a squared delta z and a single power in the denominator, so we get a delta z coming out of it just like that. Okay, of course, this function is continuous, and so we can just plug in the value. Uh, uh, this is a continuous function. Now, uh, after we've done the simplification, it is a continuous function, but uh, not in its, in its original form. But we can see clearly now that if we take delta z to go to zero, this is 2z. So recall, of course, that um, in real variables, x squared if I had to take the derivative of x squared, it is, of course, 2x. And now we see that uh, the derivative, which is called d dz of z squared, is equal to the very same formula, drum roll, 2z. All right, so uh, that's nice. There's a nice agreement between, um, between uh, the power, uh, the, the, the power uh, uh, you know, the second power uh, function. So... Uh, it seems like a lot of things are carrying over from our normal calculus, and so that, that's just great. So let's uh, now let's uh, um, try doing another example, one that maybe not be so straightforward. So of course, uh, functions in complex plane can be, you know, can be a little strange, all right? So uh, like we said before, x squared has a derivative uh, 2x. And so remember that x squared is real valued. Okay, and it has a, you know, but it has also a, a real input. Okay, so now let's contrast this. What if I take f of z is equal to the squared modulus of z? All right, so again, this is going to behave kind of similarly to, uh, to x squared, right? So again, this is real valued. The only number, you put in whatever complex number you like, the, the, the number coming out, uh, the output value is always going to be real valued, okay? And it's going to be uh, the squared modulus. Uh, so uh, you'd expect maybe there'd be a, a very similar behavior, but it turns out when you add, because you're adding this second dimension in there, uh, in terms of uh, that the input now can go in the complex plane, uh, and the output, of course, is just going to be on the, the, the real line, and it'll just be, the, the output will just be... Uh, positives on the real line. The question then is, uh, what's the derivative of this? Uh, so, you know, you might guess that, okay, then f prime of z would be 2 uh, uh, absolute magnitude of z. That would be a guess, but uh, it turns out, let's, let's actually just go and study what, what happens. So, let's, this is where we have to use our limit-taking abilities to really uh, 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 see if we can nail this down. So, what I'm going to do is take the limit of delta z goes to 0. We're going to evaluate our function at z plus delta z uh, minus z squared all over delta z. Okay, so there's the there's a great example, or there's a there's what we have to do. So recall though that 
the magnitude or the modulus of z could be written as z z bar. Okay, that's a nice way to write this. So let's see if we can uh, um, uh, uh, if we can use that form of the of the solution to get get some traction here. So this becomes z plus z uh, delta z, and then we're going to take uh, the complex conjugate of it and multiply it minus z z bar all over delta z. Okay, so uh, that becomes so limit delta z goes to zero, and it becomes z z bar. Um, and then we have a um, plus z uh, z delta z bar plus z bar delta z. And then finally plus delta z uh, um, magnitude squared. And then finally minus z z bar. Okay, lots of stuff going on there. Of course, these terms cancel right there. And so what we're left with is limit delta z going to zero. Uh, oh, sorry, we have to put our delta z on the bottom. Okay, so what we're left with is z, uh, z bar over, uh, del uh, sorry, delta z bar. Uh, and then what we're going to have to do here is then a plus z bar, right, because these cancel here. And then finally, uh, we have a uh, note that here, this term right there and that term there, that's delta z, delta z bar all over delta z. Those cancel there. And so we're left with a delta z bar. Okay, so clearly this thing is going to go to zero. But we really need to study what, that, what happens here. Um, and so uh, for that, uh, we're going to have to study that very carefully. So we, we need to need to study um, limit delta z going to zero, delta z bar over delta z. So recall that delta z is a complex number. So we can write delta z is actually going to be uh, delta x plus i delta y, right? So again, taking this to zero, this is the, uh, the delta z plane now. There's a, there's a delta x and then there's also a delta y. And we're taking it to zero through some path, right? We can take different routes. So let's take two routes. So let's try, uh, we'll try um, setting delta y equal to zero and then and taking delta x going to zero, right? And so that's the path um, coming down this way. So that's, that's going down towards zero that way. And we're also going to try it, so that's one of our paths. And the other path will be uh, fixing delta x to be zero and taking delta y going to zero. So this doesn't prove a limit exists, but it will give us a way to analyze. We want, we want the limit to exist and be the same for every path. And so we wanted to study these two cases to see if we can get some intuition of what's going on, right? This won't determine anything. Uh, 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 if the limit exists, this won't, this won't determine it, but it certainly could rule out if it, if it doesn't exist. So of course, uh, um, in, in this case right here, this becomes uh, delta x over delta x, because that's what, um, if I set delta y equal to zero, delta z just becomes delta x. So limit delta x goes to zero, and the limit, of course, is one. All right, likewise, if I do this, the limit, but recall, remember, that this is the complex conjugate. So that makes it delta y over delta y, and that's a delta y going to zero limit. And then the answer is negative one. Uh-oh, there's a problem. These do not match up. Uh, so in general, uh, we're, 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 seeing, we're sensing that there's a problem here where this, this limit here is different values depending on our path. So in general, this is going to be, um, this isn't going to work. So the only, only way it will work though is if z itself is zero. Remember, we're, we were trying to take this limit for every possible z. So in general, so I, I need to say this, f prime of z does not exist if z is, uh, is not zero. Okay, but at 
z equals zero, f prime of z is equal to zero. Because here I can clearly see if I set if I set z equal to zero, z bar becomes zero, and then the limit um, then um, uh, then it's 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 very clear that uh, that this this term which was so problematic for us goes away because z is equal to zero, and it's clear that this limit would then just be uh, zero. So for this is for that equal to zero. So the only place this function has a derivative is at z equals zero. All right. So that took some real analysis to discover, and uh, um, it, it maybe went against our intuition, which turns out to be false there. And uh, it, it just exposes why uh, we need to be very careful when we deal with functions in the complex plane. Sometimes things that seem very simple turn out to not have derivatives. Um, um, and so uh, I guess the, the final thing here is that, you know, what makes this so difficult, I'd say, is, you know, uh, the idea that for if x is a real variable, right, then we, we had kind of an idea, f prime of x, you know, had a, had a, has a, a clear... Uh, a clear meaning. And that meaning, of course, is f prime of x is the, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, and, and for instance, what we're talking about here is that um, um, the slope of the tangent line is that um, if you have some function like that, of course, on the on the on a it's a function of a real variable, that's f of x, right? At a particular value of x, call it x naught, we have a slope of the tangent line. So it had a very clear meaning. Had a it was obviously very useful. We've used derivatives in your mathematical education forever. Uh, so the idea is that, uh, um, but now f prime of z, when it exists, uh, you know, uh, you know, what is the meaning? Of, of the of the derivative in this case, and it turns out we're going to have to leave this for later, but it turns out to be uh, you know quite profound, but not in the same way as when uh, we have a function um, whose uh, derivative um, uh, 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 who, who, a function of a real variable. So this is a, has a very profound meaning, but we're going to have to leave that for a later time. But uh, uh, hopefully uh, this will uh, will keep you interested as we continue on with the course, but it turns out this has, uh, it's, in, it's, uh, it's related to uh, harmonic functions. Functions, and a harmonic function would be something like uh, u, let's say, of x comma y, where u x x plus u y y is equal to the Laplacian of u is equal to zero. So a harmonic function is a function that solves Laplace's equation. And it turns out that the functions who have uh, derivatives of complex variable functions are, are intimately related with that of harmonic functions. So I'll leave you with that and we will uh, study that at a later time. Thank you very much.